I feel nothing. Hello all you BFDers and welcome back to another video that we're making. I know, two in one week, what is this? Don't, don't, this is not happening often. I just finished watching Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender and I can say without a shadow of a doubt as the title and thumbnail may have suggested, um, this was not good. Avatar is a show that I grew up watching and is very near and dear to my heart. Not only because of the nostalgia of watching it with my sister uh, before going to school almost every single day around the time that the uh, season three was ending and, and whatnot, but also because it is a story full of interesting characters and a fantastical world and it just a stellar writing all around even from the first few episodes all that being said it hurts so much more to watch something that you care so deeply about just be fucked like in in the ass while i was watching the show from within the first 10 minutes i realized that this was not a good show and so i started writing a list of issues that i had with it from small issues to more major ones and the list is very long and i will include it at the end of the video so you can kind of read it but i don't want to just have a two and a half hour video of me going through every minute problem with the show because i don't have the time to edit that and that seems a bit tedious although i do watch a lot of videos like that so i can't really say anything i do want to point out some very general critiques that i have and also talk about the major flaw with this show maybe maybe two major flaws but let, let's stop lollygagging let's let's get into this disappointment okay to start off with um there is text whenever we get to a new city and we get that like two or three times and then that doesn't come back now i could have missed it because again my eyes started to glaze over by the time we reached episode eight but i don't believe there was text indicating the cities of like omashu or the the northern water tribe again i could have missed it um there definitely weren't texts whenever they entered a random village because i guess they didn't have names but they didn't even try to just make up names you know all the villages in in all of history that have just been unnamed so that that's kind of a weird thing i don't i don't know why they brought that in and then got rid of it and i don't know why you needed it because it, it feels almost anachronistic to put the text there like that you know when they when they when they do the text in like spy movies and stuff it you know like it goes through like the coordinates and then it arrives on the text name and it's like oh that's in the world of the of the movie i guess but in this one it's just like nah here, here's the text name because you needed to know the name of this city because they're not visually distinct and the characters don't say the name of the major cities like a billion times anyways that doesn't really matter uh the music in the show sucked the music in the original was fantastic it was comprised of amazing light motifs for each character as well as just different i guess vibes you might say they used some of those but they didn't use any instruments that are found in this culture that is kind of in our world what i mean to say is that the the, the world of avatar is derived from a mix mash of a lot of eastern asian cultures and you find that in the music as well the instrumentations are the same instruments that they use over on that side of the world uh they just get rid of that and replace it with generic like film score sound stuff and they bring it back for some things but again for the most part it's just musically uh devoid of character also i'm sure other people are going to point this out the show looks pretty gross most of the time the show looks like it's clearly in front of a green screen where the lighting doesn't match quite right or they're outside and nobody is squinting everything is perfectly exposed behind them everything looks just absolutely technically perfect but not real at all or the backgrounds just look fake as hell and again i could talk about like oh cgi doesn't look good blah blah blah. okay whatever like that that doesn't really bother me all that much although yes it does not look great and then the worst thing that they possibly could have done is get rid of the iconic title sequence that played in front of every episode of the show and instead replaced it with a 20 second little fake light motif of the avatar theme dun 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 they don't they don't play the whole damn thing through at any point they instead opt to 
jump like a fifth step or whatever towards the end and resolve it way too early you don't get the entire experience of the light motif it's like literally it is literally one of the most iconic light motifs in all of film and i'm including star wars in that it's so hummable look that's mainly like the general issues that i have and i and i can point out other issues with like the fact that characters just don't really have to struggle for things or that they're mostly passive in the entire show every character is pretty much passive or how the characterization of each character is fundamentally different from the animated show which again is not necessarily a bad thing but they don't do much interesting with it apart from Zuko which I think is and and Ozai and Azula I think that dynamic changed a lot and there that's interesting i will say that is interesting but overall nobody's actually characterized outside of the one bad thing that happened to them in their past it's like well, okay yeah there are more than that like the whole show is about moving on from your past but i don't see anything worthwhile in the present it's not until the cave of two lovers that katara and Sokka have one conversation that is not about the plot i i don't think katara and ang ever have a conversation that's not about the plot until she's talking to him a uh, football field distant away while water is rushing all around him and she's whispering to him Aang come on man come on you weren't meant to die a hundred years ago even though she didn't hear him say that come on Aang and then Aang's just standing there like hmm I can hear this the show is devoid of any sort of internal logic Okay, but again, I, I said I'm not going to focus on all the little things, and believe me, there are things, and I'm going to play them at the end of this video, as you will see, because there are so many f***ing stupid things in this show. But the two most important issues that this show has is, one, there are not enough episodes, and two, Aang didn't leave the Air Nomads at the beginning of the show. Now, to the first issue. This is the same problem that Percy Jackson has, although I do think that Percy Jackson should have just been like a Lord of the Rings length uh, movie instead. I'm going to make a video essay about why TV shows and books can't work. You might think, oh, there's more time there, so you got to do it. You know, books are chapters and TV shows are episodes. Well, the structure of TV shows and books do not mix because a book is one narrative over the course of many chapters where a TV show is supposed to have beginning, middle, and end for every single episode and you can't just... Okay, look, I'm not gonna get into that. The problem is that while the show has a very similar runtime to the entirety of the first season of Avatar, because it only has eight episodes, it doesn't have any time to build the character dynamics. Like I said before, Sokka and Aang, Aang and Katara, Katara and Sokka hardly get any interaction just between the two of them together without discussing the plot. How am I supposed to care about these characters just because I remember them from a much better show? Why don't I just go watch that show? And look, I don't have a problem with combining multiple episodes into like a one episode or a two episode arc. I don't mind that at all. In fact, I thought like putting the mechanist in Omashu was actually really interesting and introducing Jet in there as well. That's pretty interesting. I, I think doing all those together and exploring all those at the same time can make for an interesting watch and it certainly differentiates itself from the show enough to where you're not exactly sure what's going to happen that's fine the problem is that we don't have time to sit with these characters when do they ever just sit around and talk about something that is not happening to get them from point a to point b in the script i'm not saying every movie should just have a scene where people are sitting around and talking about like what food they like but talk about their views on the world something that's not directly related to the plot the most we get is that like katara likes melons like hey me too this lack of time to be with the characters outside of the plot it doesn't make you connected to them at all it doesn't make them connected to each other other than the fact that they fought together and i'm sure that that builds some sort of bonding together fine but i I, as the audience member, do not know these people. And it's frustrating to watch because by the end of the show, they want to say, hey, we are a found family, all right? We found each other and we're family. I don't see that in the show. They don't talk to each other. They just get from point A to point B in the plot and have some sometimes quirky dialogue in the middle. It's just nothing is earned. And on to issue number two, and this is perhaps the thing that made me so viscerally angry when first watching it is 
I don't mind changing characters. I don't mind changing plot beats, all right? I, I don't mind that necessarily, but when you do that, it has to be in service of some other story. What story are you trying to tell where Aang only goes off with Appa, leaving the Air Nomads to clear his mind, decides he wants to come back, and then gets caught up in the storm and loses a hundred years time. Aang is not at fault, and yeah, he can think that he's at fault, but he didn't actively make the choice to run away. That is such a fundamental part of his character, especially in season one of the TV show. I understand, well, they wanna change things up, spice it up a little bit, that's, I get it. But it means that he has nothing to learn. And the whole show tries to treat it as if the same sort of inciting incident happened. But it didn't. He didn't choose to run away. He was coming back. This defeats the entire arc that he has in the first season. Everything he's learning, he didn't need to learn. He is not a flawed character. And the one thing he was supposed to learn over the season, which I get it, it's not called Book One Water. He never waterbends once. Not one time in the entire first season does he learn waterbending and you know what that means he's going to master waterbending in between seasons one and two so i guess we have that to look forward to in season two as well ah master earthbending in between the seasons who gives a look i know i've become extremely excitable in this critique of the show but again this is something that is deeply personal to me and i don't i don't get that attached to films all that much or TV shows. I was fine with Star Wars having bad movies because you know what? Star Wars has always kind of had some bad movies, okay? I know, I know. I like episode six as much as the next guy. I really do, and it's so cathartic, the ending. But I mean, look, there are a bunch of problems with episode six. I get it, that's fine. And then the prequels came out and I grew up with them and I'm very attached to them, but yeah, like they're they're not great, come on. The, the Spider-Man trilogy, I understand. Spider-Man 3 is not a well-crafted movie. Now, I think there are reasons for that outside of the director. The point is, it's like the, those series have always kind of had bad entries, all right? It's fine. I'm okay with it. They've never been high cinema. Avatar is probably the best animated show ever made, at least to me. And so when they resurrect it for no reason and put it in live action, again, for no reason, it really, really hurts. And I know the comments will say, hey, grow the, grow the f up. And you know what? Maybe I should. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I, I get it. It's just a TV show. That's fine. I understand, but we all have things that we grew up with that we really like to not have be f***ed with. And uh, so when it is for seemingly no reason, well, that, that, that becomes an issue. See, the whole reason you should be remaking something is because the original is not great or enough time has passed to where most people don't really remember watching it. So you're like, hey, I'm gonna bring it fresh anew. Sorry, but what did you have to improve over the original show oh great it's not in a four by three aspect ratio okay cool again it's just it's almost soul crushing to watch um the percy jackson show was bad for a lot of structural reasons and again this show has a lot of structure problems as well and it specifically has acting issues and I, again i don't want to get into that because i don't really know how to critique acting in any more objective way like you know i i love the percy jackson books i read them growing up multiple times and the movies were bad so i was already used to something like that being bad but again i don't know what it was about this show that really just put a pit in my stomach um and it really pissed me off by the time the third episode was auto playing on the tv as i stared blankly at the screen wondering why god why i wasn't as angry because i emotionally had distanced myself from something that used to bring so much positive emotion to my brain and i can thank netflix for that that was pretty cool thank you guys for doing that thank you for single-handedly changing every single character to suit a completely different story which is fine but then making those characters not do anything logical or have anything beyond the surface level characterization, I suppose. Um, and thank you for making every single character worse and stupider. 
again, except for Ozai and Azula, I think I, I'm gonna be honest. I think that's pretty cool. If nothing else, it makes Ozai slightly more uh, enjoyable to watch, even though I don't necessarily think you needed that, but something positive. I'm going to edit this and rush this out and get this to you guys because I am less angry than I was. Um, but now that I'm talking about it again, my blood is pumping and I'm sweating a lot. That's probably because of the lights. And I need to, I need you to hear this. I don't have a problem. So shut up. But hey, with that, I've been Kyle and I still am. Go watch the uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes video that we put out a few days ago. Um, and subscribe if you want. Like this video if you are also deeply hurt by media. Uh, because we're all, um, um, we're all ass I guess. But oh, uh, before I go, you need to know every single thought that I have on the show. So... Thanks for watching.